keto homestead with Jess. Do you want to start a keto lifestyle but just don't know how to? Let's talk. The first thing I would tell somebody that wanted to start the keto lifestyle is to know that it's more of a mental game than anything. You need to mentally prepare yourself. What I mean by saying that is keto is a lifestyle. This is a long-term commitment. This is not a diet and you need to set that in your mind. This is not a diet. I want to also address the fact that keto is not just for heavy set people. Keto is to get healthy. Also, remember, you're getting healthy to lose weight. You are not losing weight to get healthy. Before you start keto and this lifestyle, I would suggest you go shop, get your ingredients, get what you need to have on hand and be prepared. I know a lot of people that I have trained on keto have said, you know, it's really nice to get the training from you because our kids will be sitting around eating their cookies and drinking their milk and they feel left out that they can't enjoy those moments with their children or their husbands. So if you have homemade keto cookies on hand, you can sit down and enjoy those moments with them as well. So being prepared is a really important tip. Before you go out to the store to shop for your keto ingredients, what I would suggest is sitting down, taking a little time, and preparing what types of meals you will like. Look up recipes online, some keto recipes. Check out my keto recipes. See what are easy go-to recipes that you can plan for for the week or the month whatever works for your schedule the next most important thing to me that helped me with my success was to take pictures of myself they don't have to be pictures in your underwear or your bathing suit just take some front pictures some side pictures and some back pictures and keep those to the side also, take measurements before you start. Measure your arms, your legs, your waist, your neck, whatever you want to measure. Because when you go into keto, you're not going to start losing weight right away. You're going to start losing inches way before you start losing weight. So I suggest taking measurements of your body. And you don't have to re-measure all the time or anything like that. If you want to, you can. But... I suggest doing it before you start at least. I would also say one of my biggest things was weighing myself. That scale is your enemy. Stay away from the scale. I was OCD about my scale. I would weigh myself two to three times a day. It was very aggravating. It's hide your scale, put it up, don't do it. With that being said, also tracking. Tracking your weight, tracking your food amounts. Don't do any of that. I personally found that that really a struggle to me. I did not start losing weight until I stopped over obsessing about tracking all my foods and my weight. Now, when I say don't track foods, what I'm saying is set your meal times, stick to those meal times, and don't track how much food you're eating. You sit down and you eat, you eat until you're full. It doesn't matter how much you're eating. As long as you're eating healthy, whole food, you eat until you're full. This is not a starvation lifestyle. Your body will naturally stop you from eating. Your belly will get full the longer you are on keto. Your body will naturally adapt and let you know when it's time to stop eating. The whole purpose of doing the keto lifestyle is the body into ketosis, which is training your body to go from burning carbs and sugars to burning your stored fat. I need to mention intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting is fasting for short periods of time. It's really important for your health. When I intermittent fast, it means that I am going to have dinner on most days I'm going to have dinner at five o'clock I am NOT going to eat again until 
8 o'clock in the morning. So I am sleeping while I'm in a minute fasting most of the time. Daily, I am fasting while I'm sleeping for 15 hours. You don't have to fast every single day. And I do still have mishaps. And I am just with my lifestyle I'm not always able to fast every single day I homestead I have animals to take care of and sometimes I'm outside with my husband helping him until eight nine o'clock in the garden or whatever we're doing and I don't eat until eight nine ten o'clock at night so some days it's just not feasible for me to intermittent fast but I make sure I'm intermittent fasting at least two to three times a week. So keep that in mind as well. All right, let's talk about keto foods. Now with keto foods, my biggest suggestion to my clients is if you go to the grocery store, you pick up something that you think is keto or something you would like to include in your keto list, if it has five ingredients or more I tell them to leave it alone because once you get to five ingredients they start adding in all your additives and your sugars and things that you don't want to put in your body the whole point of keto is to eat wholesome foods it doesn't make sense to put in the additives into your body when you're trying to get healthy also a good tip you need to learn the names of different sugars. You can get on Google and type in different names of sugars. There will be a list of over 500 different types of sugars and the food companies, they will try to sneak it in on you. You will not believe what has sugar in it and the names of sugar until you start reading those food labels. I was shocked. Beginning to start keto. First of all, I want to say you are your own worst enemy, at least I was. So fats, we're going to talk about fats, good fats. I was petrified. As you know, if you've watched my other videos, I started keto at 296 pounds. And when I was researching keto, there wasn't much information six years ago. <clears throat> I had to learn this all on my own. And it was very frustrating and very hard for me to get started. I did a whole year of just trial and error where I got the hang of how to, how keto would work with my body. So with the fats, like I said, I was petrified. I've been told all my life, you know, Butter's not healthy for you, bacon's not healthy, it causes high cholesterol, it causes you to gain weight, too much sour cream is too, is not good for you. Just, you know, your typical, I'm sure you've all heard it before, lard is bad for you. You shouldn't be consuming these fats. It'll make you gain more fat. So when I headed into keto, I was scared to death. And I did, I stopped, I would eat those foods and those ingredients but I would limit it because I was so scared that I was just going to get bigger than a house. So I was stopping myself from doing what I needed to do. But I got so frustrated because I wasn't losing weight, but I was doing everything that I could find to do to properly do the keto. Finally, I got to the point where I was just so frustrated. I said, forget it. I'm just going to go head over heels into keto and I don't care because I wasn't losing the weight I was stalled I was staying at 296 so once I decided I was gonna start consuming all these fats these healthy fats avocados olive oil butter bacon you know your sour creams things like that cream cheese all of a sudden something amazing happened I couldn't believe it I just started dropping pounds left and right. I was dropping, you know, a healthy amount, two to three pounds a week, every week. And before I knew it, my clothes didn't fit anymore. I was so shocked and I was mad. I was so mad. I'm like, I've been in healthcare all my life. My family has been in healthcare all their life. And all these things that I was told about health 
was a lie. I was so mad. <laughs> I ranted for weeks to people about how mad I was that the health industry has lied to us all these years. Let's talk about what you can drink on keto. So when I first started keto, before I started keto, I should say, I was drinking, you know, the sugary pops. My favorite was Dr. Pepper. I drank it all the time. I was addicted to it. And then when I started thinking about doing keto, I went to diet pop thinking that was better and healthy for me, which we all know is not. It's got aspartame and every other additive into it that they could get in. So it was a challenge for me to start drinking other things. So what I started out with was those bays. Is that how you say it? Bays, B-A-I's. And those are a healthy alternative. It's a tea. It is sweetened with stevia. And that is a good alternative. Now, you have to read the labels. Not all of them are low in carb. You need to keep an eye on those carbs. But they are a good alternative. And... I started out pretty heavily with those and they are sort of expensive but I would get those from my local GFS my Gordon food supply it's a bulk food store and they and that's how I was able to afford it because it came in bulk but as time went on I backed off of those and I don't drink them at all anymore but the reason I'm telling you this is it's a great alternative to get off pop. And then also you can drink your teas, either hot tea or iced tea, sweetened with your own stevia. And that's another thing, prepare those things, prepare your drinks, have a gallon jug of tea in the fridge or, you know, have it ready made so you don't set yourself up for failure. Also lemonade. I do uh, nowadays that's all I drink is lemonade and water plain ice water you can also do the flavor packets the water flavor packets but again you got to look at those ingredients make sure there's no aspartame or additives or anything like that uh, just pay attention and of course your coffee you can do your coffee and if you like cream and, sh and sugar normally, you would just switch it up with heavy whipping cream and stevia. I'm going to end this video with some body benefits. Now remember, I am not a physician. I'm not a doctor. These are just suggested body benefits that may occur while doing keto. One of the, I'll tell you the top three that I went through. I went through, I lowered my blood sugars. I was a pre-diabetic. I am no longer pre-diabetic. I no longer have high blood sugar and of course the weight loss benefit. Other things, other things that are suggested that are body benefits of doing keto include reduced acne, reduced risk of cancers, heart health, reduced risks of seizures, improved Pox syndrome disorder. If you don't know what pox is, it's a hormone imbalance. It happens in women and it can cause them not to be able to conceive. Also, there is less inflammation in the body, brain health, improved memory, less risks of Alzheimer's, and the list goes on and on. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it helps you to kickstart your keto journey. Thank you for visiting Keto Homestead with Jess. And if you decide to start the keto lifestyle, please, please let me know in the comments. I would love to hear your journey, your start, and what's going on in your keto life. And I hope to see you soon.